Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you're here. It's me, the how-to homemaker. I have just come home from working outside all day. It's getting a little bit chilly in Canada, but I needed to get this video done because I'm late. And so <laughs> I made a promise to you guys to get videos out and here I am. I made a flower press for you guys. It's a substantially bigger one than the one that I already had, but this is the reason why I'm late. I actually had all of the work done this weekend, but then I needed to wait a little bit longer to take the flowers out of this press that I have because you got to give it at least two weeks and I think it'll be okay to just check it out. We're going to do that on film today. So that'll be good. If they're not quite dry, I guess we'll just put it back on. I'm not too sure, but I wanted to get the video done and show you guys. And then, yeah, I showed the work of everything that I did to build the big one. I'm not going to show you because it's pretty big, but you'll see it eventually. And the reason why I did this is because I make a lot of resin jewelry and not just with flowers in it, but I would like to start pressing my own flowers. So then when I go to make the, that jewelry, I already have a bunch of flowers on hand. I don't have to order any. It feels weird ordering flowers. So I'm just going to do my own and hopefully teach you guys something in the process. Also, yes, you can put flowers in your books, but that wrecks your books. So... I don't like wrecking my books. I make a flower press. That's why I did this. So let's get to the video. First, we will do the little flower press. I'll show you guys what I put into it and then I'll do taking the thing off and then we'll do the work and then we'll say goodbye. So I'll see you soon. <laughs> Okay, so here's just a little example of some of the jewelry that I've made. Yeah, some of it doesn't have flowers in it, but I just wanted to show off. Anyways, here is the small flower press that I have. I'm just going to move these right out of the way because I need to go down just a little bit more than this is allowing me to. So if you'll excuse me. Da, 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 da. There we go. Oh, I <laughs> also have other projects in the way here. Okay, so... Let's just erase that because we don't need that on there anymore. I put a chalk label on the tops of both of the flower presses because you need to know when you put them in there so you can know when to put them in and take them out. This one I made while I was in my apprenticeship for my carpentry <laughs> and I was doing a lot of concrete back then and these were actually made out of form ply and ready rod is what I had on hand at the time. Anybody who's done concrete forms before will laugh at that. But I took this out of a box that I had because I knew I wanted to press those flowers like I was telling you guys about. And I could not believe it was just gross with form oil and I just thought that was okay. It's just funny to see how you've grown over the years and how things change because I would never in a million years. So as you can see, I've sanded everything down. I would never show you guys anything so gross like that, especially where you're <laughs> pressing flowers. So anyways, here we go. The big reveal. Well, first it'll just be this plywood layer that comes off. And then the cardboard and then paper, flowers, paper, cardboard, plywood is the layer in this not appetizing sandwich. <laughs> I gotta try and take that off without wrecking the cardboard because this is the first time I did a full piece like that and it worked really well. It's I used to just have a bunch of chunks of little cardboard and stuff all around this ready rod and that did not work as you can see. Oh, here we go. Oh, I think it's okay. Yay! Okay, let's take the paper off. Some of it might stick to this paper is what it's looking like. But that's okay. Now, I was reading with thicker flowers, what you can do is put them in between wax paper and use your iron to do a pre-press. 
so it actually squishes down a bit more and then oh sorry I'm getting distracted by taking this off It'd be nice to save this too so it presses it before you put it in the press and then that way because you have to make sure it stays very squished or else it rots has been my experience in the past with thicker ones and I thought that ironing tip was a really good one that I had never heard of before. But this worked really well. I can just take these right out of here now. That's perfect. I did all my lavender. I think these were actually just weeds that I found in the yard. So, But these little white ones are going to be perfect. And I did some sage leaves. That's what these ones are. Oh, and little tomato leaves as well. That's going to be really good for my present projects so yeah that's that not as obviously vibrant as when they went in there but they are pressed flowers they suit the purpose oh that's perfect I'll put something on top of that to cover that area so yeah oh I do like the little lavenders too okay so let's get on to what were we going to do next oh the work on how to do the big one so talk to you soon Let's just see here. I think the signs worked. Woohoo! Success! It has been locked for the first time because I had to make a sign because nobody would freaking lock it. I came home like three different times and there was parcels right on the step. I took pictures, no videos. And it worked! Yay, Amazon! And I put that there. Thanks! For locking it and I hang the lock there just like oh what a good shot it just so happens take this out and then yeah when they open it it's just hanging there like that Hey guys, okay, just a quick thing about the press itself. What I wanted to mention about this, what you might not know, is that this is a carriage bolt. It has that rounded edge right there, and then the flat machined end, that's a carriage bolt. That's what you need to do this. You can just use ready rod like I did with my little one, 
Or if you have another idea, just use that. Because I assume if you're watching this video and you've made it this far, you've used tools before and you don't need too much instruction on how to cut a piece of wood in half and drill the holes in. I just wanted to show you guys how I did it and that it's an option instead of wrecking your books. I just wanted to show you that, but the thing that you might not know is this is a wing nut, that's a carriage bolt, and when you go in and get the pieces of hardware, make sure they all fit together because if you go into one of those sections where they have so many different options, like they have, I ended up getting 15, no, 5 16th diameter, 3 inch long carriage bolts, but they had 2 and a half inch, 2 inch. They had wider diameters like there were so many boxes everywhere so i'm sure that the people who work at stores like that are not exactly that diligent about resorting everything that people just huck into their bins so make sure what i ended up doing is that i would find the carriage bolt i'd screw the nut on put two washers on and put the wing nut on and put it in the bag so i knew that everything fit because i didn't want to get home have the wood all ready to go, have my video ready to go, go to squish everything together because the flowers are already ready to go picked and pressed and whatever, and my hardware doesn't fit, and then I have to make a trip down to the hardware store. So I didn't want that to happen. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you guys, when I took those flowers out of the little press, I this is just a side note, nothing really too important, but look at that. That is a little lavender bulb. Every year I grow my own lavender, and I thought I'd put just whole things in there in case the little, well, in case they worked, really. <laughs> I knew the little flowers would work, but these things, I wasn't sure. And they, they were thick and they flattened out, excuse me, really nicely. So I would do that again and with thicker ones. So that was just a little, and yeah, look at, there's a leaf. I mean, I know I showed it to you already, but that's really cool. That's going to go good in my jewelry. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. So that's all I have to tell you guys for this week. That's a flower press. If you don't want to wreck your books, make a flower press. It's really easy to do. I do suggest using the three quarter inch plywood. I don't think I've said that yet. So yeah, make sure that you do use that because that is the thickness and that is the, that's like the weight of books stacked on top of one another. Three quarter inch plywood is very, very sturdy. So if you have those fasteners squeezing everything together, it'll just, it'll just work. So yeah, plywood, cardboard, paper, flowers, paper, cardboard, plywood. That's it. I'll see you next video because I don't want to keep talking. <laughs> Bye guys. How to homemaker. Subscribe to my channel, please. Every time I do a video, I think, oh, I'm not going to have a blooper today. It'll be just solid. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate seeing you again. I don't see you. Frig. <laughs> the video is late enough as it is because, okay, what am I saying? I gotta make it straighter. There. And I'm happy you're here. So I have been working outside all day and that's why I look like this. I might be starting to warm up by now. I've done a few takes. <laughs> but I get off my shoulder, you tiny cat. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, this is awkward. So, uh, you want to talk? Go. Get off my shoulder. You're so little. Yeah, you're just so little. <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> hey, Joseph. Guess who loves you? Auntie does. I love Tally, too. And I bet you're a really good big brother.